Good evening. It's pretty late and I'm very tired. Um, this week I have modded three controllers. Uh, I've modded two GameCube controllers. The first one I put the inverter switch on, which I've already thrown up on this channel, where when you flick the switch it inverts the C-stick so it allows you to invert the camera when the games don't allow you. Um, the second GameCube controller I modded was just a clean job so I bought some replacement joysticks and I took it apart, replaced the joysticks, cleaned out all the contacts, um, generally speaking just cleaned it up, put it all back together, worked great. The third controller I did was uh, an Xbox 360 controller, it was a, like a Frankenstein one made out of two um, dead controllers so I, I put a working uh, electronic innard in it and then made a black and white hybrid controller. It was really, really nice. Um, first time I've taken apart a 360 controller, a bit of a headache. Um, but there's a controller that I started about three weeks ago and worked on it for a night and then just stopped and put it in a box and kind of forgot about it until now. And seeing as I was working this week on so many controllers, I figured I would just go back and finish it up. So, let's show you what I've been working on. And now remember, I started this, like I say, about three weeks ago. So, most of the work was done then, and I've done most of the electronics today. So, the like the physical show was done three weeks ago, and the electronics was done a couple of hours ago. All right. Okay. So, if you've been on eBay and you've tried to buy a controller for a PlayStation, you've probably seen these. These are bootleg... Um, Chinese controllers for the this is for the PlayStation 2. This is DualShock 2. I know they're doing for um, uh, the PlayStation 3 as well. So, as you can see, the buttons are non copyright infringing buttons. And the one thing you'll notice is that it doesn't have a power cord. What it does have are two AA batteries. What this is, this is a wireless DualShock 2 or a bootleg, bootleg wireless DualShock 2. Uh, it has a little switch on the bottom. When you flick it, it tries to find a receiver. Now the red light is the uh, power light, so it shows you if you've got battery power, and the green light is connection. So yeah, they're pretty cheap. The The plastic is that horrible kind of really cheap, you know, quite brittle plastic. I would like the color, this see-through purple, and the connection is pretty good. The actual controller itself is really, really good. So what I thought I would do is take one of these apart and put it inside a legit controller. Couple of issues. Uh, firstly, I can't put batteries in it because it has a flap on the back for said battery. Oh, the, the, the battery cover is awful as well. It is really, really bad. It really hurts your fingers to take the batteries in and out. Shockingly, you know, poorly made, but for what you pay for this and the other one, I mean, it was, you know, not expect. I think it was like 12 pounds for two. So six quid, you're going to get a sharp battery compartment. Um, so yeah, what I wanted to do was take this apart and put it inside a, uh, an original DualShock 2 shell, because I really like them. Uh, biggest problem with that, obviously, nowhere to put the batteries, because it's wired. So what I thought I'd do is instead of using uh, AAAs, like the bootleg one, what I would do is get a like a, a lithium battery. Now this is an old one that I had from an old Raspberry Pi project just to test it with and it worked, it worked fine. So obviously this is too big. You can't put that in, you know, too large. So what I did was I ordered a, a battery similar to this, same 3.7 volts, but it's slightly, um, it's got slightly less uh, output. So it's at 850 uh, milliamp per hour and it's specifically built for drones. So it's for um, drone propellers, which means it's a lot smaller. And it is, in fact, a lot smaller. So that fits quite nicely on the board. And there's a little um, Adafruit uh, power regulator that I just put in there. It's a USB-C. So I hate trying to find different cords. So I got a USB-C one because everything uses, like this phone uses USB-C. So I've always got USB-C cables lying about. Anyway. 
Today I did the electronics. So what I've done is I've taken where the batteries would go, which is over here on the left hand side, that then comes out. So there's two positive and two negative. They come out and into the um, little battery charger and then that comes out and into the drone battery. I don't know what kind of life I've got on it. You know, I haven't stress tested it yet, but it works and it works well. So the biggest problem I've got is that the bootleg uh, controllers and a legit controller are completely different inside. First things first, let me show you what an, a legit DualShock 2 looks like inside. What the um, DualShock 2 uses is a membrane. There you go, a membrane um, contact pad. And I believe that's because it's using pressure sensitive buttons. I believe. Or maybe it's just a cost, you know, cost effective thing. And it has this kind of like skeletal plastic system that goes inside and holds everything together. It holds the motors together, it holds everything together. And then it goes basically with this little membrane. I mean, this doesn't even connect. It just touches down and pressure holds it into the uh, tiny little PCB, which then has everything on it. The bootleg, not so much. The bootleg uses a complete, like, across PCB with a tiny little daughter board just for the sticks. So how do you fit something that's obviously wider into something that's not built for it. Well, what you start doing is you start hacking away the inside. So you can see I've cut away all of this, I've cut away all of this, I've cut away these, I've cut away there. I've been super liberal with this because at the time I was trying to fit in this large battery. Realized I couldn't do that. So all of these, I mean, you can see, I don't need to cut away that, I don't need to cut away that, or that, or that, or these. These can stay, or well, maybe not these, but anyway. This was my prototype shell. Uh, it's just an old DualShock 2 that I had, you know, sitting in the back of a drawer. So I've been using this to prototype. The one I want to put it in is this one, which I have just now cleaned. So I love my pink PS2. I've got a pink PS2 Slim with a pink memory card and the pink controllers. I absolutely love it. I think it is so, it is like bubblegum pink. It is so 90s. I love it. So what I've done is I've cleaned this within an inch of its life and you can see in the back I've used black marker pen just to, there you go, just to see, uh, just to remind myself which bits need to go. So only a couple of bits need to go in there, but as you can see in this one, a lot needs to be cut out. So here's what I'm going to do. It's quite late. I don't know whether I'm going to be bothered to do this tonight, but like I say, I've tested it and it works. Oh, the other thing I did as well, before I forget, um, let's just move all of this out of the way. All right, this little dot here is an LED. That LED is the green LED here. So what I did was I desoldered that. It's it's a um, a um, surface soldered. It's a surface soldered LED on top. Desoldered that. And what I did was I run two wires from that around the back of the board and put it down to the LED that used to be for the analog. Now these don't have an analog LED on, but these obviously do. There's a little analog LED, but seeing as that button now does nothing other than press the mode on here, that space is just gonna be blank. So what I did was I wired the connection, the green LED, I actually wired two wires that go around to that LED which is down here. So now instead of that blinking green LED, it will have the blinking red LED in its old position, just to show you when you're connected or not. So anyway, that's what I'm up to at the minute. I am going to make a wireless, legit DualShock 2. And it is going to be, like I say, I've tested it, I've done all the electronics, that works lovely. It's just a case of hacking away at this plastic. And I have prototyped it, like I do like to prototype. So my prototype is all good, but I just don't like the silver. I want the bubblegum pink. So I'm going to start, I mean, you can see where I've just hacked the living hell out of that. Like I say, super liberal because I was trying to fit in a large battery. But yes, that is what I'm up to at the minute. And then hopefully I'll have a whole fleet of modified controllers. But I don't know whether I'm going to do it tonight. Okay, quick update as to where we are. As you can see, a little bit has changed. So I've put some motors back in. Now these motors are the original DualShock 2 motors. So we've got 
just as a just as a tally, we've got the original DualShock 2 chassis, the original DualShock 2 motors, the original DualShock 2 buttons. Um, the only things that's changed is the membrane for the buttons because the DualShock ones don't have like uh, little carbon um, contact pads on the bottom, so I needed those, and I wasn't about to peel off the uh, the, the little carbon bits and stick them on that. So we've got new. Uh, the contact pads from the bootleg are the same size, so I just put those in there. But the buttons are the same. So the buttons, the motors, and the chassis, all original. Um, that includes the triggers as well, which I still have to put in. Um, this is the new PCB, the button, power regulator, same as before. Um, down here, this is a piece of pencil eraser. Now, I bought this Stadler pencil eraser when I was building the Sega Mega Pive, and the Mega Drive reset button is like a white rubber button. So I bought one of these and mounted a micro switch inside it. So the leftover pencil eraser, because I don't waste anything, um, is here. And all that's doing is that's pushing the D-pad down. So when you close the chassis, it pushes the D-pad down so the buttons aren't loose. All the buttons are nice and tight. Um, and I've made it roughly the same height as the battery, so it's nice and even as well. Not the same weight, but I mean it's the same size. So, all I have to do now is um, sort out the L2 and the R2 buttons. The 1 buttons are actually A-OK. -okay. They've got little... Um, what I did was I cut the contact, the little copper contact, out of the um triggers on the bootleg but then use the original button so i've just mounted it on there they sit in and that's nice and squishy and because of the slot that i cut for this piece of pcb which isn't on the um original dualshock 2 i had to make a slot for it to fit this pcb in but they both fit fine um also from the original dualshock 2 i had to cut a little bit of this skeletal structure from the uh the kind of thing they use because they use a membrane with a with a little plastic skeletal bit on it um, I had to cut that off so I could mount the uh, motors properly I didn't want them lopsided I didn't want them you know I wanted them mounted properly so I've cut it and then shaped it and then glued it into place so there's just a little splodge of hot glue there and there and it all comes down and rests nicely on the board so um, that's about it. Oh, and I swapped out the joysticks as well. So the original joysticks from the DualShock 4 on it, these are the bootleg ones, I pulled them off. So, all I have to do now is close it all up and put in the shoulder buttons, which I still have to make the L2 and R2 button um, contacts. So I'm going to create those, stick those on, put those in. Once that's in, I've got to put it all together, and then I might take off the... Because I'll show you at the minute where I... kind of where I am. Um, if I close that up, let's get that out of the way. This is very, very, very rough, and I'm doing it with one hand. But if I can get it together enough, just to show you the front, if I press the start button, you see that it lights up. That is the finding light. It used to be the green light, now it's a red light. But I've also got the power light that's shining through the plastic, so I might either desolder that or find some way of just kind of covering it up, maybe with a piece of electrical tape or something, because I can't really be bothered to desolder it. But like you see, I want that one to flash and then go solid, but that one I don't want shining through the plastic, because I just think it looks a little bit ugly. So I'm going to sort that out, uh, put it all together, and then play some... What should I play? Uh, let's try out my new game, which is... Uh... Ooh. Oh, it's going to be garbage. Okay, it's been about an hour since I recorded that last piece where I thought I was nearly done. Um, turns out no, and I'll tell you why. Because of the skeletal plastic frame that's in the original DualShock 2s, the L2 and R2 buttons, um, the only part that I didn't prototype, I hasten to add, um, don't actually stay in. So what I needed to do was figure out a way of not letting the buttons fall out forward. And the way I've done it is that there is a tiny little plastic catch that sits on top um, as part of that skeleton. So what I've done is I've taken that little plastic bit out and glued it to the inside of the case uh, with some hot glue. So as you can see, the buttons now will not fall out forward and won't go loose forward. Um, it's not brilliant, but... It's basically the best I can do without trying to transplant the whole skeleton in there. But, um, I mean, on the outside, you'd never know. But, uh, yeah, on the inside, it's going to look a little bit messier. I've just got to make sure that it's flush across the top, flush across the top on the other side. And then 
put in the PCB, screw it all together, and let's see if this thing works. Okay, it's been a bit of a drawn out process, but we are finally done. Um, just for comparison's sake, here is the second of the two controllers that I got in that double pack for like £12. So the purple one I quite like and I'm going to keep. The blue one, the innards are now in here. So, externally you wouldn't see too many differences. There's only two noticeable really. The first is that this has batteries, AAA batteries in there, whereas this has a chargeable battery with a USB-C port on there. The other second very, very small difference is that this has a tiny little micro switch down here with on and off, and this one doesn't. Um, what happens when you flick that switch, the uh, control pad starts uh, searching for the little receiver. This is a little uh, eight pin, I know it's got nine pins in it, but only eight of them function. Eight pin receiver that goes to the plate, uh, that you plug into the PlayStation 2, just like you plug any controller. Um, for a comparison's sake, again, here it is next to a standard DualShock, uh, standard PlayStation 2 memory card. It's really not that big. So, what I did was because when you press, you can leave it on and then hit start to restart, uh, to re-search. So what I did was I desoldered it off the board on here and then soldered the pins to open. Because of that, for some reason, I had to search all the traces and uh, really, really get close to that circuit board. The left analog stick L3, the ground for that, which opens and closes the circuit, is connected to the ground on the switch, like chassis, the little metal casing of that switch. So I had to solder in a new ground wire just so L3 works. Super annoying. Anyway, we're done and it's finished. So. Let's just have a quick look. Let me just pull this current shut. All right, let's just have a quick look at what's running up here. So this is Deus Ex, uh, the conspiracy, I think, which is the port of Deus Ex 1 for the PlayStation 2. So what I'm gonna do, you can see the PlayStation 2 is running down here, and that is the, um, the little wireless receiver, which I've taken the chassis off, because I've got like candy pink paint, which pretty much mimics this, so I'm gonna, do something with the receiver so it also looks pink as well, but I'm not quite sure what yet. But for now, let's just turn this on. Again, I'm doing this all one-handed, so it is a little bit tricky. Okay, so the little light on the front, if it was searching, it would be blinking, but because it's found it, it's just a solid color. Also, I did turn off that other little light so you can't see it. Okay, so we're in. Oh, all right. So as you can see, we've got analog sticks, there you go. We've got all the buttons are open. There you go. Ooh, let's walk in here. Oh, this is really hard <laughs> with one hand. But as you can see, we have complete wireless control. And then again, because the um, I desoldered the on and off switch, which was kind of pointless because you to turn it off, all you do is when you turn off the machine here. This starts saying, oh, I can't find it, I can't find it. And then eventually it just turns off after a couple of seconds. So it was really pointless having that on and off switch on there anyway. And I didn't fancy drilling out the front. I wanted to keep it as close to original as possible. So yeah, we now have a wireless pink controller. There you go, it's off. Wireless pink controller, which I am super happy with. I really, really, really like it. And uh, like I say, for someone that uses PS2 a lot, I am super happy that I've got this so now I think it's only right that I celebrate with a an excellent game which I picked up for I don't know about £1.50 can't be bad right for £1.50 it's got to be excellent yeah that's what I've been up to modifying controllers still I do love the PS2 I play my PS2 a lot specifically the pink one because I got that little like £2 HDMI socket that sticks into the back absolutely highly recommended if you've got a PS2 get one of those HDMI things. It ain't great, but it's way better than trying to hook your old PS2 up to a HDTV. So yeah, um, coming from someone that collects a lot of PS2 games and plays a lot of PS2 games, I'm actually looking forward to having a, you know, a nice wireless, legit PlayStation 2 controller. All right, cool. Peace.